All right, I had uh, put a announcement in the community tab that uh, you can post your questions and uh, I'll answer some of the questions which are uh, worth answering individually, rest of them I'll compile them together. So this is one of the questions that was asked. Question is from Indus Anon, username Indus Anon. The question I have is, first I'll read the whole question, then I'll answer it individually uh, because it's multiple questions in this. The question I have is, have you become more pessimistic over the years? You seem to be increasingly looking at the negative aspect of things rather than providing a balanced opinion in many of your recent videos. And would this cynical mind stand in the way of you being an encouraging father to your daughter? Okay, good question. So let me answer this question. Okay, have I become more pessimistic over the years? Okay, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, at uh, from the age of 16 till I think somewhere around 30, I was a MC, Master of Ceremonies, announcer. You know, you do these weddings and functions. You invite the bride and the groom and then you have the function, then the dance. You know, Christian weddings have a format. I've also done events whereby, uh, you know, conduct games and, you know, uh, ensure the whole program goes one after another, uh, sequence the whole event. Okay. So I've done this over the years. But one of the... One of the strategies that I have always followed in these events is making a list of all the things that can go wrong. In the event, I have made uh, notes like for example, let's say at a wedding, what if the sound system fails? What if the lighting goes off? What if the lunch doesn't, uh, what if the dinner is not served on time? What if the priest, you know, the priest normally gives a, he gives a speech. What if this uh, sir, priest gives a speech and he doesn't stop talking? He goes on for, you know, you have allotted five minutes and he speaks for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or even 40 minutes. I've had cases of that. Uh, what if uh, there is a fight between the uh, groom's family and the bride's family? Now, when you hear such uh, statements or when you hear some questions, you'll be like, what the fuck are you talking law in a marriage? Where does a bride and groom's family fight? Where does the light go off? Where does the food come late? Well, guess what? All these examples that I've given you, they've actually happened. They've actually happened in weddings out of the many weddings that I've done. Uh, the wedding that I was talking about, where the bride and groom's family members are fighting. The father of, actually what had happened was the father of the bride was Punjabi. She had married a Christian guy, Mangalorean. And I was doing the emceeing of the wedding. And uh, she was supposed to wear a sari, you know, that uh, red, which is an Indian tradition. When she went up, when she was upstairs and she was coming down, she decided to surprise the family by wearing a Christian, you know, that white uh, dress, which a Christian bride wears. And, you know, she had a deep plunging neckline. So what had happened was uh, the bride had called me up. I was supposed to welcome them down, you know, and plan out how the sequence of events are going to be. And I saw both of them worried. I saw the bride was, you know, like she was almost about to cry or so I saw something was wrong and I asked him, can you tell me what's, what's the matter? They said, no, nothing, nothing. I said, no, there is something you need to tell me what it is because I need to ensure that this function, your wedding goes well. So then she told me that her father wants her to wear the red dress, but she wants to wear the white because it's her wedding. And uh, the husband was telling, it's your life, you do what you want, we are married now. So I said, okay, fine, you wait here. 
let me we don't surprise the parents at least i told her that because they wanted to surprise everyone so i went down i saw the father the punjabi family with the father everyone sitting on the table they were sitting separate mangalorean family was sitting separate because this was a wedding that they didn't want it to happen but they pre be grudgingly agreed so when i sat with the when i went to the father the punjabi father and i said he is a sikh you know they have the knife the dagger and so i said uh, uncle how are you and this and that fine okay i just need your opinion i just want to inform you that your daughter and son in law will be coming down to welcome them and all that and then i told him i just want to ask your opinion that if the if your daughter wears a christian dress you know the christian wedding dress is that okay i don't know what the fuck happened i seriously don't know what the fuck happened immediately he stood up and i'll fucking kill that bitch Whew. oh he stood up and and everyone was staring at us like wait, wait wait relax 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 just cool down calm down and i smile i say no it's nothing it's fine and uh, the father and the mother even the mother was pissed off father mother brother everyone came at the door they wanted to go up to the wedding uh, to where they were staying at the suite i stopped them at the door and i said listen listen just relax i just asked for an opinion she is wearing the sari it's nothing i'll convince her to wear the sari and she'll be fine he stood at the door and he said if she comes here i will kill her if she wears anything other than the indian traditional wear now i managed to sort it out the whole wedding went fine there were some complications here and there but nothing too serious but this was what it is now why did i bring up this incident just imagine that if i had been positive and assumed everything would be perfect there would be no issues no problems what would have happened i have done functions whereby people have had fights with each other there have been injuries and so what am i trying to tell you i am a guy who prefers to prepare for the worst i prefer to prepare for the worst then only live in the world where you just hope for the best we live in a day and age where today all the coaches all the uh, you know online internet marketers what do they give you they give you amazing promises they promise you the sun moon and stars they give you a beautiful they paint a beautiful picture of success in fact look at the media check uae media in gulf news kalish times national paper they only talk positive stuff about uae uae is a, in fact uh, some of the youtubers are even stating your starting salary in uae is 4000 dollars let that sink in 4000 us dollars starting salary see you uh, you know anything in extreme is always bad now that doesn't mean i only look at the negative side of things rather i prepare myself for the worst that is to come see people who tune into my channel they want to hear a balanced point of view let's say for example you as spoken good as spoken bad but i have not dwelled more on the positive stuff the reason being is it's already being done by others look at nas daily look at khalid al amri okay in terms of life you listen to jay shetty life is oh positive and beautiful and he is so listen to tony robbins yeah oh, you can do it and you can achieve it believe in your dreams listen to any motivational videos or youtube channels or podcast impossible is nothing <laughs> but then someone has to uh, you know open the can of whoop ass <laughs> the can of worms and reveal the reality you know so i am one of those guys who likes to put things into perspective and given the fact that people come to me for my service personal branding resume rebrand interview coaching uh communication skills or earning more money online i <laughs> i always tell them realistically the the tough things that they will experience the tough choices they'll have to make you know just imagine if i only tell them oh life is going to be 
amazing. You're going to achieve your dreams. Impossible is nothing. Come on, man. So if that, if that trait of mine is what you call pessimist, then I think you should only tune in to those people who speak positive. Either you do not have the stomach to handle the reality or you're one of those people who just does not understand the message. In that case, you should, you should tune into those channels where they speak at a frequency or at the intensity which you want. And then coming, coming to the second part of the question. Uh, no, the first part is over the years, have you become more pessimistic? Over the years, I've become more realistic, very practical and very grounded. For a guy who wanted to be a billionaire, I wanted to be a billionaire. I wanted to have, you know, 10,000 or 100,000 hotels globally. I wanted to have all the hottest females with me. And yeah, I was in the extreme end of the spectrum. Today, I just want to make enough money and be happy where I can pay my bills. So if that is what you call being pessimistic. Well, then you and I have a different definition. I call it being realistic. And last but not the least, see, in fact, in fact, let me tell you, I remind my wife every single day that I can die. I can die at any point of time. And after I die, the question is, what will she do next? So now, is this being pessimistic or is this being realistic? It's obviously not optimistic. You might say it's being pessimistic. Well, guess what? My wife's uh, cousin, the husband, who's a delivery guy, his body got, he got hit by a truck. His body got broken into two halves, ripped into two pieces. His hand, his leg were just pieces all over. Intestine, everything came out. This actually happened a few days ago. So now, wife doesn't work. They have a daughter. So now tell me, realistic or pessimistic or what? And last, if not the least, about my daughter. If I was a pessimist, I wouldn't give, have a daughter in the first place. Okay. The very fact that I have a child shows that I have hope for the future. However, I'm not going to be one of those fathers who tells my daughter, you can achieve anything. Impossible is nothing. No, there are things which are impossible. There are things which you cannot get. You know, just because, let's say, for example, Floyd Mayweather became the highest paid boxer in the world. Does that mean every person can be Floyd Mayweather? Well, you can aim for that. Will you get it or not is a different question altogether. One hit in your brain, brain clot, and you're paralyzed or you're dead. So, Keeping a realistic balance of things is my style of doing things. I don't know about you or anybody else. I have to remind my daughter that she is a woman, that she she gets married, she'll have to make sacrifices. As a woman, if she gives birth to a child, her career uh, will be cut short. I choose to be real. So if you categorize that as pessimist, I think you need to tune into a different channel altogether. I prefer being as real as possible to the point where I even tell people, prepare for the worst, expect the worst, but hope for the best. So when you're prepared for the worst and it doesn't happen, you lost nothing. And then you can only get good things. But if you're only prepared for the best and hoping for the best, and Anything less than the best takes place, disaster, right? So that is my style of doing things. So let me know, what do you think? You think I'm an optimist, pessimist, or realist? Love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I fucking hate this, man. so fucking irritating. These people... You know what you should do with people <laughs> like this. Tie them, put their ears next to that that uh, farting silencer or whatever you call it, exhaust pipe, and keep blowing till they become deaf. Then he'll stop having all that noise pollution. Anyway, you can say this is also me being pessimist. So, 
I hope this answers your question. Appreciate you writing a question there. This is what I had to say. Let me know your thoughts. This is me signing off. You guys take care. Are you fed up of life? Earning a pathetic salary, working long hours, having an ungrateful boss, facing office politics, the constant fear of losing your job, and after paying rent, groceries, shopping, and children's expenses, you were left with hardly any savings. Is this the life you dreamed of? Or do you wish to change your life forever? Meet Loy Macedo, the world's number one personal branding coach. He will help you identify the real you. Position and sell yourself by getting the job of your dreams and make good money anywhere in the world. If you do not believe me, Google his name, Loy Macedo, and you will find 2 million web links online and over 200 recommendations from very happy clients. So the question is, do you want to change your life? If yes, then contact Loy Macedo www.loymacedo.com Who is loymacedo.com? Thinkpersonalbranding.com What are you waiting for? Do it now!